We're going on holiday. Um, just so happens today that we've selected a holiday in Spain, but you can take your holiday anywhere. The props today, as you can see, are castanets and scarves. And I think this is a really nice theme that you can link with our going on a journey theme if you're thinking about um, linking a few ideas together. It's a really nice one to pair up. Yep, obviously thinking about how you might get there, it can be part of that play. I imagine that we'll take in the beach as well, spend some time there and water themes and all that. Um, just a quick word about the castanets themselves. It's really important that when you're thinking about planning and preparing for this that you make sure that castanets are tight, the elastic on them is nice and taut so that they spring open when they're clipped. That just makes them, uh, makes them work. So for our holiday warm-up, we're going to think about introducing the notion of um, sun cream into our skin. This is really similar to something that we've already done before. The reason I like to revisit this kind of warm-up is because you're asking your participant to start connecting with their body, to start waking their skin up, to start moving um, in a really nice, slow and gentle way. And it gives you a chance to just assess how that person's body is moving today, how they're feeling. They might talk to you about any aches and pains. And it also gives you a chance to talk to them about what's coming up. So today we're thinking about holidays. You might talk to this person, you know, as they're working. Um, putting their sun cream into different body parts about any holidays that they've been on. They might talk to you about places that they'd like to visit. And we're just gonna take a minute just to imagine we're in a lovely, sunshiny space. You could ask them to stretch out and imagine that there's sunshine. <sighs> Stretching out, especially if it's cold. And just getting that sunshine on their skin to wake them up a little bit for the rest of our theme. So, as you can hear in the background there, and you probably noticed coming in under the warm-up, the sound of the sea and some seagulls. So these sound, uh, these sound worlds are really, uh, they're a really powerful way of changing the mood uh, um, and bringing a, a sort of, adding a new dimension to what it is you're doing. So uh, really worth thinking about uh, how you can make those things happen. And, as you can hear now, there's a sound of a Bellaria coming in. So this is going to form the basis of um, what we do next. Uh, so Spanish music, uh, clapping is really important and it's a very simple sort of rhythm that you can do. Something like this. keep that rolling people will gradually join in in some way or shape or form and you can simplify it you can add like layers of complexity to it um, and obviously mainly what we're focusing on is working one-to-one -one across across a space but it there is also the opportunity to develop that out with other people and direct the clapping towards them and perhaps play something and start to use some of those ideas that we've looked at in, a, in other in other episodes uh, yeah passing the beat, uh, conversations, that kind of stuff. So one thing about clapping is just keep it gentle. You can, if you cup your own hands, it makes a much richer sound. Um, and, and, and the key with all this stuff that we're doing is just your own comfort as much as the, the comfort of the people that you're working with. So always sort of bear that in mind and you'll know that anyway. And you, it's also important to mention that you know your people best, you know your environment best. So um, all these ideas are in your hands. So we're gonna take this opportunity to learn a little bit of seated flamenco dance. Um, it might be a nice thing to do for participants that are interested in learning a little bit more about Spanish culture, who, would like to think about learning a routine as well. Um, but you can scale this down too, so it can be um, less vigorous, less energetic, smaller movements. So you can really tailor it to the needs of the individual that you're working with. But we're gonna learn some 
flamenco style movements. So we're going to start off in our starting position, thinking about hands down somewhere near our waist. And then we're going to have a nice quick sharp movement up to the top. And you see how I've now turned my hands round. So we've gone from here and then we've turned them up to here. And we're in this really nice strong position that's that's really um, uh, noticeable when you're watching somebody do flamenco dance. And then we have a nice movement, thinking about the wrists. And it's a real contrast to that sharp movement. And again, that's very typical in flamenco dance. And do you see the way I'm looking at my hands? Just to give a little bit more um, presence so then we're going to think about our feet. So again, if you ever watch any flamenco movement, there is lots of stamping. They use different parts of their feet to make the sound. For today, we're just going to have eight little um, marches with our feet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can make it as complex as you want. So you could ask participants just to use the balls of their feet. You might want to change it and do heel toe. Again, it depends on the capabilities of your participants. For today, I'm just going to do eight simple marches. And then we are going to finish with the flamenco. So did you see their head went? I've got one arm, looks a little bit like a ballerina stance. Again, really nice, strong arm. It's a strong um, style of dancing. And then I've got this just to frame it here. So let's do the whole thing. And I'm going to just draw your attention to my face. So in flamenco, it's very passionate, very serious. And so um, enjoy passing that information onto your participant, making sure they have a very serious stance here. And we're going to go up six, seven, eight here and then show the difference. And we're ready for those feet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight flamenco and you could even change it and do it on the other side as well and that is our flamenco dance castanets um, as we mentioned keep them nice and tight so they're springy uh, lots of ways to to use these and I would um, always encourage that if you offer these up that allow people to explore allow people to experiment and explore and perhaps use what they offer um, obviously they can be played like this, it can be played up and down because so we're going to use that in the dance anyway. Um, using two at once, perhaps, perhaps at the same time, encouraging that, perhaps swapping. Again, maybe crossing. But you can offer this as a, uh, a way of doing it and have the person mirror what you're doing or vice versa all those uh, sort of techniques that we've been touching upon um, this is quite a nice little thing to do a tiny, tiny sort of micro movement so and you might need to help your participant with this but holding holding the um, castanet in one hand and then using the fingers rolling the fingers it's quite tricky to do um, just using them, finding different ways to use them, but that sort of rolling activity is quite quite a nice little thing to do. Um, I mean, they are a limited instrument, of course, and uh, play, played well, they're amazing, um, but as a little tool for, for exploring music and making things sound, um, very simple and uh, pretty much anyone can use them. I just thought we would do a few things um, with the surface. 
Um, a lot of what we've done um, in terms of the flamenco dance has been quite energetic. It might be that that's really suitable for participants who have um, the ability to, to move dynamically. Um, but you can also explore this theme uh, with somebody who may um, have less movement. Maybe you might be working one-to-one -one with somebody who is in a bed, um, who just wants to do something quiet. And as you can see, I am just taking a piece of paper and creating what I hope will be... You're making a fan, aren't a you? A little fan, yes. So it's a really nice opportunity, as you can see, to start a conversation, to perhaps this could be how you finish your session, or it might be that it just becomes a small dance with your paper fan, you can yeah. fan each other. I mean, there is nothing quite like, I mean, if you've ever been in a room with people when they're just w working on making a little something, it, w the room really quietens down lovely and people get very focused, so it can be a lovely thing to do, a simple object like that. You can also take some of the, uh, so you can take the castanets as well and place them on a table. Again, somebody may not have the dexterity to pick these up, but they can be played. And we can revisit some of those ideas, so we could do a simple call and echo. A call and response. <laughs> That's quite tricky, that one, isn't it? And so on. Have a little conversation. All sorts of ways of uh, exploring it on the tabletop. And again, we've also got this really tactile object here. So again, you might want to talk about uh, the waves that you might see on holiday. And you don't have to be, you don't have to do anything big with the scarves like we've done in previous sessions. It might just be about um, exploring the texture on the table and keeping things nice and quiet and calm and having a conversation with somebody. And of course, when we come out of COVID, it might be that you've got a few nice shells. Mm. Maybe you've got some nice warm sand. All sorts of ways of uh, developing the activity.